like a mutant turtle on steroids, riding on a giant spider cat, looking for a fat lobster. It's time once again for The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, dredged in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you news and interviews from the Geekoverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my buddy, Mike Kafis. Hey, I can have some hey, red Dunkin' Donuts there, hey. <laughs> A little north of that, Mike. Oh. And my other co-host, Jack Ballard. Hello. And joining us this week is Ben Bishop. Cheers. So, <laughs> cheers. Yes, Ben is a comic creator from Maine. He's wanted to make comics since he was four years old. In 2008, he released the 300-page Nathan the Caveman, which was soon followed by several other smaller works. In 2011, Bill, Bill, <laughs> Ben illustrated. See the Ben ill. Ben, ben, uh, anyway, Ben illustrated the award-winning uh, Lost Trail, Nine Days Alone in the Wilderness. It led to illustration work for larger companies like Archaea, IDW, Darby Pop, Action Lab, Nickelodeon, and Hasbro. In 2015, he put together a Kickstarter campaign for his next big project, the Aggregate. aggregate God, man, my lips are just not working tonight. For which he raised $30,000. You mean uh, this? This right That's here? The one. That's oh, the wait. One right there. Wait a minute. No, Mike. This right here? This oh, right here. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mine looks better than yours. I got okay. some Burger King coupons. All Woo! right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy. <laughs> so, Ben, welcome. Welcome, to, welcome back <laughs> to the Mythwits. Yes. Welcome back. This is his third appearance, I believe. Uh, it is. Well, I, I know. I know it's yes. at least my second because we did one before my last. Before the aggregate, yeah, or during. Yeah. And then there was, uh, did he stop in for something? Or yeah, did we record yeah. him twice? Uh, no. Okay. You mean, the, you mean did we screw up and have to re make a, re a re recording? No, yeah. no, never happened. No, that never happened. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back in season one, that kind of stuff never happened. Nah. Um, so so anyway so Ben welcome back um, Ben if you if you want to catch the first episode with Ben when we talk all about the aggregate we went, we went totally into that uh, and his early works um, you can check out season one episode forty but um, but now the aggregate's done and uh, and and it's proof is is we have these these are nice look at this thing this is this is a girthy book it's beautiful it's beautiful yeah, started reading 200, it two hundred forty pages nice <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. And you have a weird, not a weird, I don't want to call it weird. I don't, I don't want to call it weird. I want to say it's a unique process that I've never, I've never seen before. I don't know if any other comic book artists do this, but you post your, your, your pencil drawings on the ceiling, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm weird. I, uh, I, I'll call it weird. Uh, okay. <laughs> with, with that book in particular, I started this uh, process of printing out all my roughs as I go. Because I do all my roughs digitally, and then I do the finals on actual paper on the desk. What I do is I light box my roughs and then do the final on a nice clean sheet. Um, but anyway, as I'm doing the roughs, I'll print them out and put them all over my walls so I can see the whole book at once. And uh, with the aggregate, I was in a fairly small studio room. And so it ended up going to the ceiling for a lot of the book because uh, it was a lot of pages. And, uh, having them up on the walls like that is really nice. Cause like I said, you can see the whole book at once. Um, as you're drawing like the next rough or one of the finals, you can look and make sure that, you know, if she got hit in the face, that the scars on the right side or whatever it is. But uh -huh. uh, more than that, more than that, as I'm doing the finals and like finishing off a page, what I would do is I would rip it down. I would rip down the printed out rough of the one I just did because it gives you like a little bit of satisfaction. And there's like this little, real like physical reward for finishing something, you rip it down, crinkle it up, throw it on the ground, grab a beer, like, um, because with the whole process of doing all your roughs straight through, 240 roughs, and then all your finals straight through, you don't really get that satisfaction of finishing a page that you would if you started that morning with a rough and then ended that night having just finished the final of that page. Right. Um, so I tried to give myself, like, little, you know, little rewards, but not big enough that I would – feel too good about myself and just take a break. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, this is what you do. This is your job, right? I mean, this is 
This is your yeah. living. Like, it's not like you like, oh, get up and go to work and then come home and do some comic book art. No, this is, you got to pay yeah, the bills. I mean, yeah. The first book that you mentioned uh, in my bio there, Nathan the Caveman, it's a 300 page book that I started when I was 18 um, and it took me four years to finish. But the first half of that book, the first 150 pages, the first um, three years of that book, um, I was working odd jobs, lobster companies, and coffee shops and things like that. Um, but it wasn't until I saved up enough to finally say like, no, I'm going to finish this. Um, and I quit everything and I was able to dedicate all my time to it. And so the second half took only one year. Um, right. So it's just amazing when you don't have to, as I'm sure you guys know, because you seem like creative people when you don't have to split that time. Or, uh, and it's hard after working a regular job and then coming home and being tired. And, hey, Pete, oh you don't split God. your time, do you? You don't split your time into like 10 or 12, <laughs> 20 <laughs> different things. Oh, my God. Family. <laughs> No, Family, right? <laughs> nitwits, creatives, other endeavors. You don't do that, do you? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't get up at six o'clock in the morning and go to work all day and work nine hours a day and then drive home and then you know take care of the family, cook dinner. Well, I don't take care of the family. My wife and I take care of the family. I don't want to take anything away from her. She does as much work as I do. But you know, wow. Uh, did you hear that? Do, wow. Do the, what podcast you know, is she on? Right? <laughs> no, she she runs, dude. She's she runs a a photography business on the side. She she's always working, man. She's she you know she works just as hard as I do. But yeah, I, I Ben, it's it's hard. It's hard to do all that stuff. I can't imagine if I could focus all of this energy into creative stuff. You know, I would be uh, less moonves. I think I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> it it, uh, it definitely turns into a job like very quick, and you find yourself complaining about shit you shouldn't complain about like oh i gotta make comics and i got so much work to do it's like right. yeah but it's just comic books but it does it turns into a real job and then uh, for a while i was taking and i still do uh, a lot of commissions and then comics don't generally pay a lot so you have to take a few at a time and you get easily like overloaded um, oh yeah it can, it can be pretty stressful because you'll still be working on a project but need new money and so you'll take on work before you finish something else and then it's just this like constant overlap um so right now actually might be the first time in a long time well the aggregate was nice for a long time the beginning of that book i didn't have to do anything else um and then once that kickstarter money started getting like scarily low i uh started taking commissions again and kind of balancing between commissions and finishing the aggregate but uh right now might be the first time i'm able to um just do one thing. Uh, I'm going to clear off everything I have still on my plate, commissions, other small books and things like that. Um, and then I'm just going to focus in on the project and do it now, which we'll talk about in a bit, I'm sure. But it'll oh, be yeah. the first time that I can just do one thing at a time, I think. Yeah. Let, I, got a, I got a question. So sure. I remember I asked you this back in season one uh, about what you charge for commissions. Uh, has that changed? Uh, what do you like? If I said Ben, I want you to uh, draw Pete as a naked Superman, and I want him to have a very small penis, but I definitely want it to be a pronouncedly small penis. Does that? Does that kind of commission? I don't in, in, in color, <laughs> and I want this in color, and I want it like you know eight and a half. Tell he's really thought about this. Like this, he, I this think, isn't just an off the cuff remark. I'll send you the dimensions of the penis, but <laughs> okay, can we stop saying penis? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> but, too but, much thought into that penis, buddy. Too right. much thought. Can we? I mean, it, it we, was just—it was just so descriptive that it couldn't help but paint a picture for all of us. Which sucks. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. We all. Yeah. Think oh. that, uh, You're killing me, Mike. You're so, killing me. I'm, hey, Ben, go ahead and talk. I'm gonna grab something real quick, and it's not anything. Okay. I'll be right back. Hold on. Go, it's not straight. anything pronounceably small. It's so, a tiny okay. penis. <laughs> so, in that sword. <laughs> okay. So as uh, anyway, while he gets his headphones back on, what what was what would that be? What would that be around? Uh, uh, I don't know if I told you my commission price last night because I usually don't because uh, uh -oh. it is it is very dependent on uh, the content. But you said like three things that I really. I got to a point where I was finally able to make like one rule where I said no to things. Uh -huh. But you said like three of them. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> was was penis one of them? Stop saying uh, penis, Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> the, the penis is one. Uh, no, it's not like I don't do 
that or anything, but I, uh, uh, I don't really, I try not to do like the crazy and appropriate stuff because I do, I am doing Ninja Turtle stuff now. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's so right. I try not to get Nickelodeon and all of stuff. That's why look, Jason look, Biggs got fired as Leonardo because he was saying stupid stuff online. Like uh, Mike. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, but the main thing that you said that is worth mentioning that but it was the first time I ever like made a rule that was like, okay, I finally had a place where I can turn some stuff down. And here's one thing I'll, I won't do. And I don't like drawing like people like, Oh, draw him as this or draw my wife as this. Or, uh, it's just not fun because people don't like the way that they actually look. <laughs> right. And so you'll, you'll do it exactly like them and they'll be like, Oh, like, but I think I did do one of you. Actually. You did. Uh, I got. It. I picked it up. I picked it up. Yeah, so this is a while back. This is like a ways back. And this is, he did a yeah. Lando com. He had comic covers, and he did. Uh, it's me and Lando in the cantina drinking Colt forty fives. It's like one of my favorite pictures, dude. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So that I think that was maybe one of my last. I may have even prefaced it with like I don't usually do this because right. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of a tra- it was a transition of saying no because. People still wanted to pay, and I was like, "Okay, I'll do it one more time." <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pete, you were intricate in helping him say no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I remember it was. It, it was a, it was a time where um, I think you were in between a lot of stuff and the Kickstarter the like the Kickstarter was st- maybe still going or the or money hadn't come in yet on that or whatever, and and you were like, "I got some bills to pay and I got some covers, so." Bring on the commissions! Ooh, I'll take the first okay. twenty that come in, and uh, yeah. and I jumped on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I took uh, my opportunity while I could. That's a, I mean, that, that's one of the best things that really changed for me, um, getting my name bigger and a lot of it helped the turtles really helped with that, but it was like, I was at like a low point cause comics are such like a crazy roller coaster. I sure. could just be like, okay, I'm going to stream a whole season of something tomorrow. I can do 10 sketch covers who wants one. And I'll Instagram has been, pretty huge in that being able to like fill up that list pretty quickly yeah uh, so that's been really awesome for me that's cool for that. yeah. that's cool that awesome. so i just want to i want to show a couple of these things off so we, we got you know i keep showing the cover of the the aggregate book uh but it also came with a bunch of other little goodies which are cool oh, yeah. like uh he sent me uh got this uh spider cat sticker which is yep. awesome yeah uh, i haven't wanted to, to i haven't wanted to st- no i'm like i don't want to I don't want to get rid, you know, like if I put it on something yeah. and I have to get rid of it and be like, I'm going to lose my sticker. So yeah, I'm kind of hanging up. You have uh, to really be, I have a box full of stickers that I've gotten that are like rare or unusual or, and I, I'm just like, I don't want to use these on anything. Cause you know what I mean? Everything. Yep. So they sit. So you like, so what, like you see Jella Biafra at a, uh, at, at a show or something at some spoken word tour or something. And you get like a sticker that you can only get there. I'm just yeah. saying that as an example. And you're like, I don't want to use this. I'm, I'm you, know, you may not get another one of these again. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then it came with some bookmarks. These are some, here, let me do this. These are some, uh, pretty cool, pretty fancy schmancy bookmarks. They're pretty, yeah. they're both and it, and two sides, different things on the sides. Um, yeah. and then this, it's like cool, eight bookmarks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. And then this cool map, and I want to say that before Westworld came out, there was yeah. this, you know, right? I was first. Yeah, I saw I was Westworld, first. and I was like, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> no, no, right. That's the first, when I saw, dude, when I saw it, it's the first thing I thought, I was like, ah, oh, he's ripping off Ben, damn it. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I really don't think, you know, they heard no, about no, the I don't. No, but, I don't. But uh, there is some. You never know. There is some, I think it's um, New Mexico. I looked it up on Wikipedia after the Westworld thing. And there's, it's in Breaking Bad too. It's on, in one of the AA meetings, the guy has the same kind of symbol on his arm. It's some drunk from the AA meetings. And, and so I looked it up and what it is, which is funny because the main character in the aggregate is called the man. And the whole point is that at the center of that map that you just showed is where the aggregate is. And the whole idea of the aggregate is, all these people who control the giant robot just started heading towards the middle to bring it back to life and, you know, decimate the human race again. Um, but anyway, the legend, the New Mexico, I think it's a Native American thing uh, about that map is is a legend called like the man in the middle or something like that. Oh. I, was like, wow. I was like, they fucking ripped me off too. No, <laughs> but, <laughs> I think it's just like a big collective consciousness thing yeah. um, or like I'd never heard of it, but it's out there. In the ether or something. Zeitgeist. But, uh, yeah. 
it's it's like it's like one of those great ideas that that gets rediscovered over and over and over again that no one actually yeah. ever invents. You really just kind of discover it, and like you discover mm-hmm. it, and this other person discovers. It's kind of like one of these, I don't know, like yeah, like one of the Fibonacci numbers or something, you know. Um, but just the or the golden mm-hmm. ratio it just keeps coming around. Yeah, it's um, really weird. Um, yeah. There were a lot of similarities in the original, like legend of the of that maze. Um, a lot of them pertain to you know Westworld was definitely nodding at a lot of them, but there were so many things in my book that were also in that. It talked about like the end of the world and how there was like only five individuals left or something like that. I was like, Are, it was like right on the money. So nice. Weird. Very cool. But, um, but that's what the aggregates are about. <laughs> and and oh, but, but we, before we move on away from the aggregate real quick, I just I just want to say that that the the, the artwork is fantastic. The story's really good, but what is really amazing is the work that that Ben put in this because this is probably a God, dude, this had to be at least half the work is making it a split decision book mm-hmm. where yeah. you it's like like the old days to choose your own adventure. It's very similar to that where you read through it. Um, and you're given choices. You know, do you go here? Or do you go there? Do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And then yeah. it tells you go to this page if you want to do that. And the story continues down that vein. But if you make another choice, the story goes in a whole nother direction. So Ooh, yeah. uh, it's really, really cool. Yeah, there's so uh, I, I believe there's four beginnings, seven endings and 25 choices in between. Wow. Um, and I don't know what that math works out to as far as various, you know, different options or how many different ways you can read it. But people have come up to me at shows and said that they've read it 16 different times and they're still not done. Um, so I'd like to find out what the most, the most possible is, but it's really cool. Jack? Too because Oh, Jack, can you do that calculation real quick? Uh, yeah. 43. Okay. Great. 43. Right. <laughs> <Man's> 43. <laughs> Good uh, and then, um, yeah, it's just pretty sweet. Uh, and then all those endings too, because it is a volume one, it's book one. Um, all those endings, unless it says the end, like you lose pretty much, uh, are to be continued, which will be beginnings yeah. in book two, which I'm hoping to kickstart in March. So, so does that, that mean if, go all the way back. if I read yeah. the book and I got to the I lose, I can't get the second one? No, because that's the thing, too, that you realize as you're making something like this is no one's going to read five pages of a 240-page graphic novel. They're going to go, ah, well, fuck, let's start again. And they yeah. do it again <laughs> in a different way. Mike, did you, right. did you ever have a, a Choose Your Own Adventure book when you were a kid? Did you ever have any of oh, those? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you, you did the thing, right, where you're like – you're reading through and you go, okay, go to page 21. All right, and you keep your finger – Keep your finger right there, and you go. Oh yeah. shit! I died. Okay, go to page twenty-two. Oh, that's the one I want to use, right? No, I mean, I everybody does oh, that. I, I, that's I, why. That's why I made sure that it came with four bookmarks. Right. Oh yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Oh, that's smart. That's oh smart. shit, Ben! See? I swear to God, he's smart. Why else would you Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's available now, right? I mean, people could. If I, if you missed the Kickstarter, yeah. you obviously you can buy it now. Yep, it's uh, theaggregatebook.com, um, and you can go get it. Uh, there's there's three covers, um, but there's only one that's available all the time. There's two variant covers, which I only printed 500 of each. You get mm-hmm. one of them. Yes. And, uh, that's awesome. and those go up on special random days it's, uh, for sale, and I I have them at conventions. That's so it. wait a minute. We, Pete and I both have the exact same cover. Though. No, you got different nope. covers. We have you different know, covers. Let me see your cover, Pete. All right, hold on. I don't think we even compared. Nope. Yeah, Mike's. Mike's is the regular cover. Uh huh. <laughs> I got the alternate cover. You see it? Yeah. The, the face open is open. Face. Look. Open oh. face variant. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like an open face. Oh. <laughs> Well, I yep. like a closed face anyway, so there you go. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was, I was happy to be the first one. That, that thing came up, and I was like, "That's crazy." And I was, I was the first backer. I was like, that's the exactly. only time. No, I've, I've done it one other time. That's right. I've done it one other time. And you've got a big mouth, so it, it, it it's a good fit. It's a fit. It's a fit. Yeah. So then, you know, I got to I, I gotta give you credit, man. You, you, you pursue your dream. You know, you love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and now you're working on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or you have worked on it. Yeah. Um, and so I think that you- happened. I think that happened after we met. I mean, yeah. after I came on the show, I think. Because I think mm-hmm. it was halfway through the Kickstarter, or so, um, 
but yeah, I just was doing fan art. Basically I was making prints cause I do a lot of conventions. I was making 11 by 17 fake covers, uh, for Ninja Turtles. And then, um, artist Ben Templesmith, who you may have heard 30 days at night and things like oh, that. Yeah. Um, we became friends at shows and stuff. He came over to my table and was like, Oh, you're doing turtles now. Huh? And I was like, no, not really. Uh, I tried to get it in front of them and they just, you know, say, keep up the good work. Yeah. Keep in touch. And he was like, fuck that. And so he, <laughs> two hours later, two hours later, I had an email from IDW where they CC'd him and they were like, Hey, we heard you wanted to do turtles. Let's do it. And I was like, that's awesome. So nice. I think it, I think wow, it was like over 10 covers now. Um, and then it led to some other stuff. So yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you were talking today, so you did a live video today and you do those from time to time. So if, if, uh, you should, you should follow Ben if you like his stuff. Cause I mean, he goes live and he'll talk to you and stuff. Um, yeah. he, you were talking today about, uh, how the, the bar is the place to go at a con, go to a con, go to comic con. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then after the convention, like after the regular hours, go hang out at the bars and you'll run into people that you would normally stand in line and they would say, hi, how you doing? Okay. Yeah. Mm, great. Get up, you know, take a hike. Cause I got this, I got a line of like 50,000 people. Uh, but if you go to the bar and you see them, you can walk up maybe. And if they're, I mean, I guess you don't want to like shove yourself into one of their conversations, but, uh, no. if you're at least somewhat social, you can generally kind of like talk to people. Yeah. I mean, we do it, we do it all the time, right, Mike? Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. cause I've, I've met, God, I've met, all kinds of game designers because I go to a lot of gaming conventions. All kinds of game designers and sit and get to pick their brain and stuff, and it's it's amazing. And they're you generally they're generally really nice people. Yeah, if yeah you sit, we sit at the right place at the right time, and we're just like exhausted from walking around all day. And then you know somebody who we just went to their panel came and sat down right next to us. Is like, hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. I'm at San Diego. I think I met the most. Um, different people uh, like I was just sitting outside with you know David Avaloni and mm. and uh, a couple other guys I don't want to give away the end of this story but uh, Jim Lee sat next to us and oh nice and like, hey and so somebody introduced me to him I, I'm pretty close with Jim Kruger who did uh, Earth X and uh, a lot of Marvel books like that he does his own books now uh, you know him Earth X though for Marvel yep Yep. Yeah, with Alex Ross. So he he had a few drinks and was just like, "Hey Jim, hey Jim," and he like poked a Jim Lee on the shoulder because they had talked to email and he was like, "You got to meet my friend Ben." And then I gave him an aggregate and it was awesome. Oh sweet! Um, but it was all because cool. of the bar. Yeah. 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 And That's Jack, you're going. You're go hey, you're going with us to. I don't know. Are you? You might be able to go to with us to Total Con. When's that? Hopefully. Um, or Gary Con, one of the two. Uh, yeah. That's in, in February. And uh, one's in February, one's in March. So we'll have to, we'll oh, have yeah. to figure I'll out. I'll have plenty of time to procrastinate and make up something. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Because uh, we we'll, we'll meet a lot, of, especially Gary Con. There's just so many. I mean, uh, Ben, you know what Gary, you ever heard of Gary Con at all? No. All right. So you know, you know who Gary Gygax is, right? Of, of TSR fame, of Dungeons and Dragons fame. Um, when, oh, you don't, what? What? All right. Anyway, so you've heard of this game Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it, it, so it, was, it was created. It was created by uh, Gary Gygax uh, and Dave Arneson for the most part. And Gary Gygax, when he passed away, his sons uh, put together a convention up in the the hometown in, in um, uh, Lake Geneva, and That's they awesome. have a. They have a, like a big, it's like a big little convention. So it's, it's, it's a good size, but it's not like giant, like Gen Con or Dragon Con or something like that. And it's awesome. Cause all these like game designers and, and like old school, like game uh, people work in the industry come to it. And like you said, just like a comic con, you get to hang out and you meet people and you're just like, Oh, you're the guy that did the blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, That's awesome. Yeah, so it's a good time. So, so you started doing what, what all have you done with TMNT? Like, what is, are you actually drawing, like, are you doing like inside work or covers or writing? Uh, or? Just covers, just covers right now. I've actually got, uh, behind me, that's a Bebop and Rocksteady one yep. that I did and I blew up. And then right. actually behind you guys, I framed up my very first one. You getting that? Yep. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, my check from IDW is in there too. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. No, not much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I've done that. I did a revolution one, which is uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, ROM. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait a minute. Did you say ROM? Like Mass. Space Night ROM? 
Yeah, yeah, it's this big crossover. Sweet. Oh, oh revolution. Shit. Oh shit. Sweet. Yeah. And uh I did that. I did yeah, like I, I think I've done like ten now. I, oh, my most recent one just got announced a couple of days ago and shown online, but it's uh, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters two. So I've oh, got wow. Raph shooting the proton uh, gun there. Let's see if I can find it for you guys. For some oh reason, that for some so reason awesome. that fits so well. I don't know why yeah, Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles like it's like it seems like peanut butter and jelly really. Yeah, because you can just awesome. see him with the proton know. pack and the guns and. The, yeah, it, it's cool. And I just, my cover rap is just like going full bore, screaming into the air, shooting off him, off the page. And uh, you'll have to look for it. I can't find okay. it. Okay. But uh, it's pretty good. Issue four, I think, of the new series. Sweet. Okay. Fantastic. So, so then, Nickelodeon owns Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Is that, I thought yeah. I kind of heard you say that. Yeah. So Nickelodeon uh, makes all the. Final Calls, IDW is licensing wow. the Turtles just for comics. Um, but yeah, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, co-creators. Uh, Kevin sold his rights uh, like in the 90s, uh, right after that Power Rangers turtle show, uh, Next Mutation with the female turtle. Um, he's, he sold his rights uh, to Peter Laird and kept them until after the CGI movie TMNT, do you remember that one? It's technically like the fourth one where it was all animated. Mm -hmm. um, and that came right after that like Fox version where Under the it Fox was more movie. like extreme. It was like yeah. the Turtles 2000 version. And so Peter did that and he did um, the TMNT animated movie, uh, which actually has Chris Evans as Casey Jones, Sarah Michelle Gellar as cool. April, Patrick mm -hmm. Stewart's in it. Uh, but um and then after that, Peter said he felt like he had done everything he wanted to do with them, and he was it was he was ready to let them go. So he sold them to Viacom, Nickelodeon, um, and they've been doing it since. And that's why we have the Nick Show and everything else. We got. I can see how he really wanted to make sure that he got a cameo of Vanilla Ice in with the with the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because that is the best part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Is I that imagine. Where they, did you ever see that? Uh, I think it's the Ninja Turtles 2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then go they turtles, got this awkward, go turtles, go. awkward, weird cameo by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> it's, it's basically the, the end of the movie. It's the Is big it really? finale. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a big it's dance It's been a while off. since I've seen it. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> big finale dance off. Uh, and then Vanilla Ice still holds on to that, too. Did you see those mac and cheese commercials like a couple months ago? No. He's like, yeah, in yeah. The grocery store, like stocking shelves, and this mom is like, "Are you vanilla?" And he's like, eh. and he starts singing it again, and they're like Ninja <laughs> Turtle, Ninja Turtle mac and cheese. It's awesome. Oh god, yeah, I didn't know this. Hey, he's got to yeah. make money somewhere, you know. He's got to got to yeah. pay those lawyers' fees. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so speaking speaking of uh, uh, the turtles creators, so you're working with Kevin Eastman now. Yeah, so that's the big news right now. Um, I was at Heroes Con in North Carolina, and uh, it was like the Saturday of the show, and, and people were asking me similar to what you asked me, like, oh, are you doing the insides of the, the turtle books now? And it's like, no, nah, just covers, just covers, and, you know, I'm not complaining, but people no, are covers like, is good. I don't get it. They're like, I don't get that. Like, why don't you do a full book? And I was like, I'd like to. I think they're still, you know, feeling me out, and da, 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 da. And then later that night, uh, I was at the bar, <laughs> and, uh, and I got a text from kevin who got my number and it said uh hey ben kevin eastman he's like i have the aggregate here in front of me and it's fucking awesome <laughs> he was like right. i want to know what you're doing for the next year i have a project i think would be perfect for and i had only met him once before i met him at rhode island at the bar uh and then <laughs> and then um and so I was like, holy shit. And so he was like, call me anytime. So I stepped outside and called him. We talked for a couple hours and he told me about this book that we're now in the midst of a Kickstarter for called Drawing Blood. Um, and it's essentially like uh, a fictional true story. It's, uh, it's about this comic creator called Shane Bookman, who at a very young age creates this enormous franchise called the Radically Rearranged Ronin Ragdolls. Um, <laughs> And they're they're, sam they're samurai cats. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anything yeah. else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's reaching. But it's kind of like, yeah, it's a it's kind of the story of you know 
what happens when you do that and what it was like and, and things like the stories from the cons. Like there's a lot of stories he's picked up over the years, even if they're not his stories, like Frank Miller will have told him something like Howard Chaikin has some stories, uh, Simon Beasley, like there's all these crazy antics that happen like at these conventions. And so now we wanted to wrap them all up into like a, a tales from the con, like kind of behind the scenes. Um, huh. And so the story takes place long after he sold the rights to the rag dolls. Uh, and, um, He's trying to get back into his creative side um, and tap back into that. Um, but there's a lot of other crazy, fantastical stuff going on, like gunfights with Lithuanian gangsters and car chases and cocaine, and lots of crap. But uh, <laughs> uh, he'll be, I'll be drawing the whole book. Uh, Kevin is co writing it and co creating it with a guy named David Avaloni, who's um, done The Shadow and. Uh, and Betty Page right now is the book he's working on. Um, and then Kevin's gonna actually do some flashback scenes. So those will still be in his art and it'll have a nice kind of transition into the flashbacks. And then this uh, artist, Troy Little, who did the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas book for IDW is doing all the cool, radically rearranged run ragdoll scenes where they actually like come to life and in a Fear and Loathing Las Vegas kind of way, you know, uh, like, torment Shane Bookman as he's trying to uh, tap into this new creative life. Nice. Um, why'd you let us go? And so the style will kind of like change and they'll kick him around. And so a little naked cool. lunch in there too. A little bit of yeah. like, you ever see naked lunch where he's like, he's imagining like bugs talking to him and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. So, hey, hey Ben, do you know who uh, Thaddeus is? Yeah. Is he talking to us right now? Yeah. He, uh, Mirage Leonardo 84 in the chat room. He says, Hey Ben, it's Thaddeus. Cowabunga. Cowabunga, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's been the, the biggest proponent of our, of the Kickstarter. So yeah, we got a Kickstarter going right now for this book. I, I didn't really mention that it's drawing blood Um, and we have 63 hours left. <laughs> uh, so the book is funded, but we're trying to hit a stretch goal right now. Um, hey, does someone need to uh, call the fire department, or what's going on? Are we okay? It's not me. I don't. I don't know. There, is, there is a it? sound in the background. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's my neighborhood. Oh, is okay. it okay? All right, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, if you need to go because your building's on fire, we'll understand. <laughs> the lobster alert! The lobsters are on the march. Lobster man. <laughs> Let me look out my window. <laughs> make, sure, <laughs> make sure they're not climbing up the side of the building. You know, maybe. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's the uh, teenage mutant ninja, ninja lobsters. They they study that lobster crawl. Oh, got the lobster crawl. <laughs> it's it's lobster. It's a lob <laughs> it kind of is. Lobsternado. Lobsternado is happening. Lobsternado. Oh, that's right. We said we we're going to have a. Uh, uh, we're going to make everything like Sharknado. Wait a minute. Hold on. What we got here? Five <laughs> islands up. Nice. Nice. Is it, is it right? They, it already went off earlier. It's our neighbors. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> drawingbloodcomic.com. <laughs> right. our, uh, our goal was 75000 to make the book. Um, we had a crazy start. I don't know if you were watching, um, but we got like 40000 the first day or something like that. It was insane. Uh, Kevin, and then, yeah, yeah. Kevin <laughs> has this crazy fan base. Um, Turtle fans are the best. They're like just love everything you do. Um, Turtle, of course, and otherwise. Like as soon as you you lock them in, they just like, well, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? They're they're ferocious. Um, so they jumped in. Uh, we hit the goal yesterday or the day before. Um, and so that, yesterday, yeah. 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 So that was. Um, it was a long month wondering if we were going to have that insane start and then lose it all. Um, but we got it. And so now we have like, we had three days left to get the stretch goal, which is a hundred thousand. Now we only have 60 something hours, like I said, but if we hit a hundred thousand then the Troy little guy um, is going to do the radically rearranged Ronan ragdolls issue one um, origin stomach uh, comic. So it'll be like, the actual book that came out from Shane Bookman. So wait, so it's going to be, this is, a, this is amazing. So 
so TMNT was sort of a parody on on comics in general at first, but yeah. but basically uh, a Daredevil in a lot of ways, right? It was uh, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of Daredevil parody in it. So this is a parody of a parody in a way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The uh, the cats are all named after um, famous anime directors. There's Miyazaki, okay. Miyazaki, Suzuki, okay, yeah, yeah. and Otomo, um, and they live above. Uh, sushi restaurant and they love sushi of course <laughs> so, right right as they would yeah. the cats the cats lay around all day like oh, i'm so hungry <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all they ever do do they fight the evil blender is that uh the blender no oh, yeah that, blender? is no. he blender or is he like saute or what what is the uh what is it their villain Instead of is shredder a, is not is not a, a cutter kind of weapon uh but he's a. Uh, I think his name is, I think it's like Uber Dog or uh, Turbo Dog or something. I've only read the radically rearranged thing once. Um, but we have these videos on our Kickstarter. If you go all the way down, um, do you guys know who Vernon Wells is? I've heard that name. Seems like you would know who he was. Uh, so he was in Mad Max, but he was also Bennett from Commando. Do you remember the chainmail vest? Yes. Like, I don't even... Yes. <laughs> so. So we got this video, if you scroll down on the Kickstarter page, where he's talking about how he knows Shane Bookman from back in the day. He voiced the villain and never got paid. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he's the one that Arnold says, he says to him, stick around, right? Isn't that the yeah, one right, where he gets the pipe through his some chest? Steam. Or blow some steam, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, I know who that he, is. Yeah, it was insane. But man, he, uh, was so in, in, he was in Mad he's Max. In Mad Max. Yeah. Which do you, do you know the character? Was. Okay. I'll find out. God, that's one of my f- favorite movies. Uh, the, the well, the first two, the third one, I just pretend didn't exist. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. No, I. I'm not sure the best place to find it. That's all right. It, it's yeah, okay. Well, there's yeah, that's cool. Pictures of him. Yeah, the mohawk. Oh, he has a mo- the big mohawk. So he must yeah. have been the motor. Oh, that's right. He's probably the motorcycle, the crazy dude. The yeah. uh, okay, cool, cool. Um, oh, Wes, Wes, W E Z. So what? Uh, you know, I see Robert Rodriguez might do a variant cover. Is that is that a stretch goal or is that a or is that well, a done deal? He's doing it, Rodriguez. Um, who you may know from Dust Till Dawn and spy kids and <laughs> uh, El Mariachi City yeah and El Mariachi he uh he's actually buddies with Kevin um and Kevin was trying to find a way to involve him and uh Robert had inked a cover that Kevin drew for Ninja Turtles issue 50 um because apparently he's a good artist too like he's a good draftsman um and so he was like I've got an idea and he and he asked him if he would um Ink a variant for us, and so as we're coming up with this idea on the phone, me and David and, and Kevin, I already finished my rough of it, and it's a it's a take on the El Mariachi poster, but instead of a, a guitar, he's got a portfolio with comic pages flying out, and he's still got the big <laughs> gun, and instead of the turtle on the cover, it's one of the cats, one of the ragdoll cats. Um, and so I did the layout, Kevin did the pencils, and right now Robert is inking it. So that's our third variant. Uh, Kevin and I each have a cover, and Robert's variant. So that's very awesome. Nice. Yeah, we can't great. wait to see it. But let's hey, see. Do so, want, do you want me to show the uh, on my page? Do you want me to show the uh, a little bit of the um, Kickstarter? Uh, or, yeah, we could do it quick. Yeah, do it quick. Yeah. I'll I'll share your page. I'll have your page up. Yeah. Um, but you're at currently at seventy nine. 701 mm-hmm. that's pretty good yeah it's been at 79 <laughs> kind of all day which is driving me crazy i can't wait to hit 80 i think 80 will look really good um to people as far as getting closer to that stretch goal and they'll be glad to be out of the 70s the, the 60s were the 60s were really hard uh, the 60s were hard uh, is it sharing to, you know, yep okay so yeah there you go there's yeah, there's good. the uh that's where you are now and you know um I find that, or at least with all the Kickstarters I've ever seen, or and we've we've reviewed a bunch of them and and watched a bunch of them, 
Um, and then I, I also ran one. There's this last day rush. I think you'll see like a, a there's always a bump at the end, like a big a big like yes. bump of money at the end because what happens is people say I want to watch this or remind me and then it reminds them 48 hours out so I think you said you're at what are you at you're at 63 hours to go so yeah. I'd be willing to bet in like a yep. day you're going to see a, you're going to see it start jumping up a little bit yeah they say it's the 48 hours and they say they say and they what say. I've witnessed too is, is that it's as good as the first day so if we have a day that's as good as the first day we'll yeah. be the same but, so uh, wait a minute. If I if I pledge like forty dollars, I get the Rodriguez and your cover, uh, right? I get a, I get, so so or, forty bucks. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, okay, forty so, bucks is Eastman. Okay. Uh, you can get all three covers for one twenty five. One twenty five. Okay. okay. Well, I just—I uh, think I don't know. I'll, I may only go in and get your cover, but uh, I'm definitely in on it. So you got my sweet. money. Thanks. I think this is how we did it last time. I, I do Mythwits to get just your money. I think yeah. that's what happened last time. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a, it's, it's a tough it's a tough thirty dollars, but you know it's worth no, it. I, that, that was just like crazy deja vu. I think that's what happened last time. You know, you're like, you know what? You convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the bishop train. The bish train. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, another thing that people are confused about, unfortunately, for a while, and there was a lot of messages back and forth, is every every single reward tier over ten dollars, you get a real book. Uh, for some reason, the the wordage on some of the rewards, people thought it was digital up to like two hundred, uh, which is not the case. And the other thing is, people thought it was like a twenty-two page one issue book, which is not the case. It's it's a hundred and twenty-two pages or so. Uh, it's essentially four issues in one, and if it's anything like the aggregate, it'll end up a lot bigger than that. Um, so you can expect a full, you know, a full story there. Look at Fantastic. you, man! You're hanging with the big leagues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I think it's great. I all right, all right, Mike, you can stop sharing it. We're good. Um, all right. But but yeah, I I. Dude, I, it's been fun. It's been it has been awesome watching your career take off. Cause like you know, we first started. Um, we first started. We had you back what three years ago, and you were just like really starting to get you know into doing some really cool stuff. Um, and and you know just watching you like mingle with these because I you know I I stalk you on Facebook. No, I, we're friends on Facebook. No, I share <laughs> and you share no you do you share a lot and it, it's yeah. it's really cool I, i'm always like well look at Ben, man he's kicking ass fucking great for him yeah. you know i think it's awesome so it's, it's it's been a lot of fun watching that and you know and you're generally a nice guy it seems seems like at least yeah. you know generally yeah. seems that way <laughs> one hour at a time one hour <laughs> We yeah, gotta well, figure out somehow where we can all get together and have a beer, man. You gotta come down to um, I don't Total know. Con. I guess I guess Total I'm Con, be, but uh, I'm gonna be at Baltimore Comic Con coming right up next month. Oh sweet! Oh, sweet. And Mike, we're not going away to Dragon Con this year. We could, we should go hit Baltimore Comic Con. We sh we should we should. We think Jack up for that too. The bar. Yeah. yeah, I'm down with that. When yeah, is right, next that. weekend? I have no idea when it is. I'm the worst at keeping calendars. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you're banned? We just realized we're going to Baltimore Comic Con. <laughs> well, we can I, never I go. The shit's we in my backyard. I don't even know when it is. Right. We always go to uh, Dragon Con. I'm looking at them now, but you guys. And it's it's too My close for us, again. you know. It's like we got we got Dragon Con that we go to, and then we come back, and it's like oh, fucking all wiped out and moneyed out, yeah. and you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to go to the actual show. We've been over that. You can go right to the bar. Kinesi, <laughs> Kinesi 820 is like Baltimore Comic Con. Why the hell wasn't I notified? <laughs> it's the 20, 22nd through the 24th. Consider yourself notified, buddy. Yep. Yeah. 20, 24. Meet us. Hey, you can come to Baltimore Comic Con and meet the Mythwits in the bar. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You can... We'll be performing for change on the intersection of uh, North and Lombard. <laughs> you can come down. I'll, and... I'll bring my hat. You can put just some put money put... in our hat. Yes. Right there, you go. You where can exactly, pet Mike's bird. Where exactly is the corner of North and Lombard? Exactly. They're two. Uh, they're two parallel streets. They don't intersect. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 so that is real Baltimore inside, right there. That was yeah. real inside baseball, but it was the first two I could come up with. 
Right, right. Oh, uh, Kinesi says uh, that, I don't know, I'm sorry. You are either a he or a she, and I'm sorry. But you're saying you already met us. Who are you, then, if you already met us, Kinesi? Ken. Is that Ken? Is that Ken? Sai? Ken Sai. Oh, Ken. Ken C. Could, could that be our buddy Ken, you know, Lumpy? Ken, Ken IR, IR notified. Right. Um. <laughs> Oh, John, oh, Walker. John, John oh, Walker. Oh, John Walker. We know John Walker. He's oh, coming okay. on the show in a couple weeks. John, he's a writer. He's an indie writer. He's he's awesome okay. dude. He's a lot of fun. He's a funny guy. Um, all right. So, well, Ben. Is but there, he's not uh, a mushroom. Yeah. It's, um, I, you know, I don't want to keep you too late. Uh, we're, we're right about on time. So, uh, let's share some links here. Um, right. Make sure. You absolutely make sure you go to bishart dot net that's b-i-s-h-a-r-t dot net not dot com dot net um net. I mean, get on the dot com train fast enough all kinds oh. of really good artwork he has on there it's very very cool stuff uh he does share a lot on facebook so you can find him on facebook uh you can find facebook.com forward slash the aggregate book um uh, do you t- you, know, you said you shared your twitter bishart yeah, b-i-s-h-a-r-t twitter. are you a twitterer do you twitter a lot yeah, I'm better on Instagram. Instagram is okay. the same name, B I S H A R T. I tend to share the same stuff I do on Instagram on Twitter. Uh, okay. I feel like Twitter's better for writers and things like that. They're more quippy, and uh, yeah. I'm sharing sure art a lot of times. So. I'm, I don't like I'm not a Twitter fan, but uh, but yeah. Hey, I got. Uh, I try and ask every guest, what are your uh, favorite musical bands? Just out of curiosity. That's always like the. The thing that like bullies ask, and then they're like, "That music sucks." Oh, he is a bully. <laughs> no, he's a bully. <laughs> Damn, he got called out. He's like, "I just want to take you down for your lunch uh, yeah. money, Christ!" Come on. Uh, I, I like Jimmy Eat World. Uh, if you don't listen to Jimmy Eat World, you think that's a terrible answer because all you know is the middle. Uh, but they have done a lot of other really, really good stuff. Boy, did you nail it, buddy! Let me tell you something. You like Way that? back. About 15 years ago, my band played with Jimmy Eat World. No way. And we'd never heard of him. And we were like, this is the dumbest fucking name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and so the singer of my band was sitting at the bar with the singer of Jimmy Eat World and was grilling him on why the band was named that. And eventually it got to, dude, just fuck off. And they both went their separate ways. But wow. yes, I am familiar with Jimmy. You know, 15 years ago, they were a very hardcore punk band. And they've kind of uh, changed their sound. It's very interesting yeah. that you said that. That's interesting. Yeah, I love them. Um, I like Brand New. Uh, they just had a new CD come out the other day. It's pretty mellow. Uh, and they're the same way. They used to be a lot more punk. Uh, and now they're, I don't know, more mellow, kind of very Morrissey-inspired, obviously. Uh, and then Manchester Orchestra is a good band. I don't feel like them. But, uh, cool. And then sometimes I'll just listen to Garbage because it's, like, really fast, you know, moving, and I can draw to it and just, like, not think and... So I'll just turn on some uh, Kanye or <laughs> Big Sean. <laughs> so, I don't know go. why you strike me as a John Bellion kind of kind of guy. No, you know I've never even heard that name. Before. What's it? It's not on your playlist, John Bellion. Bailey. No, I'll, I'll check it out. Though. All right. I'll He's tell you, right. You, know, you know who I'm getting into lately? Uh, you ever heard of Run the Jewels? Nope. Oh, no. My God. Well, I've heard of them, yeah. Oh, Jack's heard of them. He doesn't like them. (laughs) I've been liking them, man. I think they're awesome. Yeah, I'm not surprised. (laughs) (laughs) Bully! Stop bullying me, Jack! That's exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) Music snub! I'm sorry. I'll leave you guys to your Kanye's and your jewel running. (laughs) Jewel running? Never say anything else. (laughs) <laughs> all right oh you can all right so look right, let's get back on track here you can also uh, please go to uh drawingbloodcomic.com the aggregate book.com and uh go into kickstarter and just type in drawing blood you'll come to it There's, i mean it's a long link here um so just oh yeah just drawing blood drawing. comic drawingbloodcomic.com goes to it goes right oh to does it okay all right that'll get you the kickstarter oh, yeah. And back, it's awesome. Uh, looks awesome. Yeah. Looks awesome. At least I haven't seen it. You know, we got, man, but we got it sixty-three crazy. hours to get to a hundred grand. So, wow, well, let's do it. Feed the artist. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm being fed now because of the seventy-five. So I'm very happy. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> obviously, that's that's going to uh, the Kevin Eastman. Um, what's it called? He has his own company, which essentially will be self-publishing this, and then he's going to be funding um, the creation of it because there's me, there's David, there's uh, Brittany Peer is coloring it. She colored the aggregate. I was able to bring her on board for this. Oh, cool. Uh, Does he have his own press, or do you guys like um, just hire out? Uh, he does. He has like the whole Kevin Eastman crew. It's a lot of people. Um, I think that used to work with heavy metal cause he was, he's part of that. He's still part owner of heavy metal magazine. I, oh, I did, I'm, I'm sure. Did you know that Pete? Cause I did I not did. know that. I that knew is that. I absolutely wild. know. Dude, I, yeah, I, it was crazy. I get heavy I, uh, metal. I, it's one of the comics I get. Okay. All I right. love heavy metal. I rolled into uh, I rolled into San Diego. I didn't have a table. I didn't even think I was going to be going. But then he said, "Like, no, you're coming. We're going to announce Drawing Blood." And and I was literally walked ten steps into the into the show, and there was the heavy metal booth, and Kevin was signing. And he just like got up, gave me a big hug, and then all the people there were like, "You can have a spot too." And I sat at the heavy metal booth all weekend. It was nuts. I was like, "Okay, I guess I got a table." So. And I never thought I would be at a heavy metal booth of all places. Nice. That's fantastic. Hey, hey Jack, you ever heard of uh you ever heard of Phoenix Morning or C A L M? Hmm. No, what are those uh, uh boner pills? What what is that? No. <laughs> I'm assuming, is, is I'm, that I'm assuming some somebody no somebody who was asking about some I guess I'm assuming it's music that they were no. asking about in the chat. Okay. Right. Uh, hey, so we'll, you're the music expert around here. We're, so. we're going to do one more thing and then we're going to let Ben go. Ben, uh what's this about the mustache? Somebody going to going to get that yes. mustache something? So the main character in Drawing Blood, Shane Bookman, you'll notice has this awesome classical mustache. Um, and so as a stretch goal, I did this with the aggregate too. I said, if we hit this goal, I'll shave my beard into this crazy mustache. So oh, it's sweet. just a way to make me look silly. Are you going to like, so if we get a, I don't know. I'll probably do like just this for a while. Or maybe I'll okay. start like this for a couple right. hours and then just do this. And then right. maybe I'll end up with just that. Um, I look very Spanish when I do it. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, hey. we'll, uh, I'll do, I'll do that at a hundred. Thousand. Okay. And then I went on record yesterday saying I'd take a taser to my leg if we hit 200,000. So let's hope that the beginning of this campaign is just oh, as good as, or the end of this campaign just as good as. I know what I'm doing all day tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taser to the leg. Right. Taser face. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hey, no, but uh, if you need to kill some mooks in the book, you know, feel free. I mean, we are three mooks that are very uh, willing and always easy to get killed. Have, have you turned into Adrian? We've I got to say that. Reward. I knew it. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> We've got a reward for that, though. You guess so. I can. I can't do it. There you, uh, Mike, uh, buy the reward, we're, and there you go. Sp- <laughs> I think that's outside it's like of my. That's yeah. like two hundred bucks. Yeah. A little, little said, to the left of yeah. uh, your your bank account yeah. there. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's let Ben go. Well, I'm, glad, ben, I'm glad I got you. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, you and, got it. Uh, awesome having you on the show. You're always welcome back. Um, just, hey, just make sure you don't close that Zencaster until a little later on. Just kind of leave it up because uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna go. Mike and Jack and I are gonna go just a little bit longer. Um, sure. So just just let are it you go gonna be able to like hear everything in my house though. Oh, maybe we will. All right, you know, we're going to stop this. I don't, I don't do anything in this room anymore. No, no, don't it, do anything profane for about no, no, wait, 20 wait. more minutes. This is just no. the vicious moments. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's fine. I'll stop it and restart it. It'll be fine. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Just just, just leave it on. I'll, I'll kill it. And No, no, because I don't record anything in your house. It, that's cool. All right, so Ben. This uh, alarm. <laughs> why don't you why don't you uh well, good night and why don't you jump out and then mike jack and i are gonna hang out just a little bit longer everybody stay okay. tuned hang on uh mike and jack and i are gonna do something real quick um all right thanks and, uh, ben thanks a lot thank you very much thanks for coming yeah. man take care awesome. all right sweet Okay, go back down to three people here actually i think he is fine he would have been fine we were i wasn't thinking about that um if he closes the one window, as long as he leaves the, just the Zencaster window open, we're fine. 
Nobody uh, would hear it. But yeah, okay. You, okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, Mike, are we going to do a game or what? What's what's up with that? Dude, I have it. I, I, I got a game ready to go. I mean, if you want, um, it doesn't have to be special. We can even just keep you right on the feed because um, of the whole sound issue. Um, keep, you know, keep this on your feed. Um, and but we can run through this game. I'll, I'll I'll do the reads and everything if you want. It's fine. All right. Well. All right. So then let me uh, let me run the closer. Okay. Um, and then we'll everybody hang out. We're gonna do a game. Well, the show will start back up again. I'll just I'll just go down like we we talked about before. I'll just keep running it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, everyone, let me do this thing here. Get my notes ready. All right, Uh, you have just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits Podcast. Catch us live on Twitch Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jump into the chat room and ask our guests questions. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Uh, Find us at Mythwits.com on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Podbean, all as the Mythwits. Uh, Do like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. If you like us, you're bound to like the other great shows there as well. Check out TSRPN.com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out Sue187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Hey, if you go to our front page and you go to the news on Studio187.com, just go and enter. Uh, you'll see my latest post in the news there. We're running a promo. Uh, you can win stuff by promoting us. Uh, but that is that is that. So thanks everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. Peter picked his pronounced penis. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? <laughs>